In New York, intense lobbying continues for seats on the UN's highest body for the defence of human rights, the UN Human Rights Council. Australia's Foreign Minister Julie Bishop is pushing the case for our country to get a seat around that council table, but Saudi Arabia, Arabia is lobbying hard to head up the UN group. And that's led to some international outrage. Saudi Arabia is considered to be one of the world's worst human rights violators. This all comes as human rights groups wage a campaign to stop the crucifixion of a young Saudi man sentenced to death for his role in the Arab Spring pro-democracy protests three years ago. UN Watch is a Geneva-based non-government human rights group which scrutinises the United Nations. Its director is Hillel Noya. He joins us from Geneva this morning. Hillel Noya, welcome to RM Breakfast. My pleasure, thank you. Can I ask first your view uh, on the fact that Saudi Arabia is bidding for the, head, the role of head of the UN Human Rights Council and it appears to have the backing uh, of Britain anyway? That's according to some secret cables that emerged over the last 48 hours. Well, uh, the, the facts uh, that we know so far are the following. Uh, two years ago, Saudi Arabia was elected as a full member of the Human Rights Council and really the, the problem, uh, the scandal began with that and uh, our organization, UN Watch, led the fight to oppose Saudi Arabia. I went to New York City. I was there with Ali al-Ahmed, Saudi dissident, uh, and other human rights activists, and we pleaded with the United Nations General Assembly not to elect a misogynistic monarchy that denies every single article of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of religion, equality between men and women, the right to life. These are all trampled by Saudi Arabia, and yet... The UN went ahead and elected Saudi Arabia. Once they became a member, the troubles began. And two things happened in the past year. One, in uh, May of this year, we learned that Saudi Arabia was trying to become the chair of the Human Rights Council. Bear in mind that the former discredited Human Rights Commission, which disappeared in 2006 and was replaced by the current council, it was notoriously chaired by Colonel Muammar Gaddafi's ambassador in Geneva, uh, which was you know, the death knell for the commission, and now we have Saudi Arabia trying to be chair. Uh, they're not chair yet, but they did become the head of a uh, committee in charge of selecting human rights experts for a range of issues, including women's rights and and um, uh, independence of judges, things that are absurd given Saudi Arabia's record on women's rights and non-independence of their judiciary. Um, and UN Watch, uh, our organization, revealed uh, first actually in, uh, in the Australian this week that the UK uh, may have done a vote trade where, whereupon not only did the UK, did Saudi Arabia vote for the UK on the Human Rights Council, but the UK may have voted for Saudi Arabia. And, and how, do, Arabia. how do we know this? This comes from cables, I think, um, referring well, to talks yeah. between British and Saudi Arabian diplomats, which were given to WikiLeaks in June. Is that right? Have you seen them? That, that's right. Our organization, UN Watch, when the Saudi WikiLeaks cables were published, we went through and we looked for issues dealing with the UN, uh, and we found a number of things. One of the documents, we found two documents relevant to our discussion. One was that the Saudi ambassador in New York, in this document, in this cable, it was in Arabic, our organization had it translated, uh, the Saudi ambassador in New York writes to headquarters and he says, we've been approached by the British government, they're asking for our vote to elect them on the Human Rights Council. I suggest, he says, that we ask them in exchange, which is a common practice at the UN, that in exchange we ask the British to vote for us. And um, the Australian asked the UK Foreign Office to comment. They said that it's standard practice not to comment, so they wouldn't deny it. Um, and my comment in the newspaper was that it's not standard practice to keep these things a secret. In fact, Bangladesh and Vietnam recently announced that they are voting for each other to be on the Human Rights Council. So there's no excuse for the UK not to say yes or no. Did they vote for the worst regime in the world when it comes to women, when it comes to freedom of religion, and so many other fundamental human rights? Did they vote for them onto the Human Rights Council in violation of the UN resolution that created the council, which says you're supposed to consider uh, candidate countries' record 
on promoting and protecting human rights. Okay. It's not just an idealistic thing that, that non-governmental groups want. The United Nations guideline that was adopted said you're supposed to look at the record. Let's go to the record of Saudi Arabia. Riyadh has sanctioned more than 100 beheadings so far this year. That's claimed it's more than Islamic State has carried out this year. It's also sentenced to death by crucifixion a 20-year-old man who was convicted at the age of 17 of joining an anti-government demonstration. Given this... Do you think Saudi Arabia has a genuine chance uh, of being elected chair of the Human Rights Council? Well, I, I, I just want to add one other name, which is Raif Badawi. Uh, he received our Geneva Summit Courage Award this year, and I had the privilege to meet with his wife 200 kilometers east of Montreal and meet with her three children. And I don't think we can forget someone who I think is one of the most courageous individuals in the world who is in, sitting in prison in Jeddah for the crime of publishing a blog calling for a liberal society. As you know, he's been sentenced to a thousand lashes. Mm. He's received 50 and 10 years in prison. So um, that's someone else that we, we keep in mind, of course. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think they have good chances now because we exposed it in May, and, and I think that, um, that a deal was probably made, and I suspect, I fear that uh, in, to, to compensate, as it were, Saudi Arabia for declining to run for the council, and they haven't officially declined, but I think that they're going to they're gonna, uh, hold back, and instead they got chairmanship of a very influential committee yes. which selects uh, these experts. And that's, that's my guess, but we won't know until January. January is when the Asian group is meant to uh, select their representative. All right. Hello, can I just ask you, because our foreign minister has said that Australia is pushing hard for a seat on that Human Rights Council on the platform of uh, ending the death penalty and also better education opportunities for women and girls, pushing hard on those things. The death penalty I mentioned there, the beheadings in um, uh, in Saudi Arabia, and it's you know it has a terrible record on that front. But of course, the US and China, they are, often hold seats on this human rights body. They also um, sanction the death penalty. Should anyone, should that be a, a, um, a prerequisite for ruling out people sitting on this human rights body? Well, it might be, but you know, we, we, sh we shouldn't compare apples and oranges. When Saudi Arabia and China put people to death, there's no uh, due process at all. And yes. there, there are distinctions. Th those of us who are opposed to the death penalty can distinguish between someone who gets beheaded for going to a demonstration and someone who's been receiving full due process of law as normally one gets in the U.S., not always, but America in general is a country that respects the rule of law, even if we are opposed to the death penalty. Look, with all the criticisms that we can have of countries like the U.S., the fact is that anything positive that gets done at the Human Rights Council, whether it's holding North Korea to account or Iran to account uh, or Sri Lanka, it's the Americans who really uh, do the heavy lifting. And can so I just ask you briefly, on that score then, would Australia also be a welcome member of that council in your view? We need Australia on the council, but provided that it doesn't act like the Europeans, that it doesn't do cynical vote deals with countries like Saudi Arabia, provided that it doesn't vote. We know that half the EU voted for Russia and China to be on the Human Rights Council. So if Australia lives up to the principles that we have seen in recent years, uh, and I was present 11 years ago when Michael Smith of Australia chaired the former Commission on Human Rights, and he was an exemplary chairman, and if Australia acts in that tradition and speaks out and despite unpopular unpopular and uh, takes unpopular positions, uh, whatever the, the political mm -hmm. cost, uh, then that's the right thing. If they just go there to go along, to get along, um, that would be the wrong thing. So if, uh, on the whole, we welcome Australia. Hillel, Hillel, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Hillel Neuer is the director of UN Watch, a Geneva-based non-government human rights organisation which scrutinises the UN.